Hey guys, Solomon here. Hope you're having a great day. I thought in today's video we could cover what to do when playing the hippo against early queen attacks. I've had, you know, quite a few of you guys ask me, you know, what to do against this kind of thing. You're playing the hippo, but white kind of just brings out their queen and, you know, trying to make havoc. What do we do in a situation like this? Well, a lot of these lines you can't memorize, right? And that might be part of the reason that so many players have a hard time with early queen attacks because you don't know where the queen's going to go. You don't know what it's going to attack, all that kind of stuff. But what you can't, what you can't control is your approach. Right. That approach being that you're going to ask yourself two questions. First off, what is the queen attacking? Right. You got to know what the queen's attacking. And then from there, what is the queen actually threatening? Right. Just because the queen's attacking something doesn't mean that it's threatening anything at all. And if you play correctly, early queen attacks against the hippo are only going to help you as the hippo player. You're most of the time going to play exactly what you are going to play anyways. And white is going to lose a bunch of tempo because of their approach right so let's look at a couple of examples you know against e4 i'm a big fan of g6 right but i know that a lot of players like different things so okay let's play the move of b6 a lot of players like the owens let's say we see queen h5 what is the queen attacking right question one well it's attacking h7 and f7 okay now are either of these threats no if you take on h7 we just take it back with the rook and if, if you take on f7 we're actually forced to take the queen okay i don't know about y'all but i'm i'm excited to be forced to take a queen you know at move three in the game so you know okay i mean we just we just continue developing right there's no threat here now if we see something like bishop c4 and all of a sudden there is a threat right you know white could take with the bishop or the queen on f7 and that's going to be checkmate so in this situation we play e6 the nice thing about the hippo is that we're going to play e6 anyway so whenever i see bishop c4 i just lock this bishop down right lock it down white here all of a sudden is kind of out of threats right we're just going to continue going into our usual hippo setup you know there's a lot of moves that we can play here h6 for example just you know kind of as you see highlighted you know pieces here you know the, this bishop and knight could jump into that score if we don't play h6 although all that to say in this situation it's not like they were going to do much anyways but this is still an important move to the hippo right because we are preventing this forever and we're also looking to expand with g5 and finally we're allowing ourselves to play the move of knight e7 after h6 because if we play knight e7 right now white could play bishop h6 and that's a little bit annoying so okay we play h6 for a multitude of reasons but from here we just continue developing and the nice thing about the hippo is that none of our pawns on the sixth rank are, are really targets for the queen right they're all protected at least once okay some of them two some of them three right uh you know our central pawns are defended once our b and our g pawns um you know our g pawns defended twice our b pawns actually technically considered to be defended three times right by the knight pawn and queen indirectly supporting that pawn and our sideline pawns on the a and h file are protected by a bishop and a rook now the f7 pawn and the c7 pawns can become a weakness but of course by playing a6 and h6 we're kind of protecting them from knight attacks and all that kind of thing it's just going to be hard here for white to break through let's say they let's say they sack right let's say they sack and they take back with the queen what is the queen attacking right ask yourself this question again what is it attacking what is it threatening in this case the queen's attacking a pawn two knights and the pawn on g6 is it threatening anything no right d6 is protected our knights are obviously protected and if you take on g6 the knight's no longer going to be it's no longer going to be pinned right because it's you know the queen has moved right so in that case we just take the queen and we're good so again no threats here there's a lot of moves that you could play here we're simply up one point in material you could play rook f8 i'm a, I'm a fan of that move just just kind of getting this rook to the open file and uh okay i mean if, if white wants to play d4 let's play knight f6 if you want to keep pushing like crazy knight d5 very common idea in the hippo right just rerouting that knight to the center of the board and uh i mean okay i mean if you want to play something like 94 we play bishop c8 if you want to take the knight we're just going to capture back with the bishop and we're completely fine and if you take on d6 okay we're, we're willing to trade down here right we're up one point in material and white really has nothing to show for it right let's go over the other move that we have here after e4 with the move of g6 now notice here by playing g6 you've already eliminated the move of queen h5 i did have a student that was you know i think he was playing b6 and he was having a hard time with queen h5 lines look if you play g6 move one queen h5 simply can't happen right the only way white can try to threaten a mate is to bring the queen to f3 and then the bishop to c4 but again lock this bishop down right now the bishop is, is pretty much useless on this diagonal at the moment right we're just going to continue developing play a move like d6 knight h3 you know maybe maybe white's looking to play knight g5 there we could play h6 h6 is totally playable we could just continue developing with the knight right we're not worried about any kind of bishop h6 idea here there's no battery ram and uh, if we do see knight g5 then we just castle 
right? Again, in that situation, the queen is only attacking one pawn. That's it. Is it threatening it? For sure, right? Because this knight would be supporting the queen. We definitely don't want two pieces attacking the pawn on f7, and we don't want to just leave it there if only our king defends it, right? Because that, that's not good, okay? So we, we, need, we need a couple of defenders there, including another piece besides the king. So, okay, we castle here, right? Queen h3. Again, what is the queen attacking? The pawn on e6, well defended, right? We're not worried about that. But we are worried about queen takes h7 with mate. So we play h6. Notice here, this is kind of the setup that we want in the hippo anyways. But now white is going to be forced to play a move such as, you know, knight f3 or play some kind of, you know, play some kind of crazy sacrifice. And black here just with a really solid game. Okay. White, you know, they, they've played some cheap threats. But, you know, when, when they weren't threatening anything, we didn't react. And when they did threaten something, we played a move that we were going to play anyways. And from this point, we are, you know, just continuing to play a solid game of chess, up development, and really, you know, getting a head start in terms of our hippo setup. Thanks for watching today's video. I wanted to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of May in 2023. If you haven't checked out the Patreon before, make sure to go check it out. There's a lot of exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. Again, thanks for watching today's video. And I'll see you in the next one.